What is good? We're back. We got another running back eval for you. We got a little Zach Evans on the first one. Going with a little Zach Charbonnet. I like that with a little, uh, like a like a, a, crisp, a, a crispy baguette, you know? <laughs> a little jam. Some marmalade. Charbonnet. Mm -hmm. A four-star coming out of California. Uh, I believe... Oak Christian High School, um, 6'1", 220. Now, is a bit of an older fella here. Uh, well, I should say he's a senior, which people aren't going to like that. Not an early declare. Uh, <laughs> Get rid of him. Just turned 22 on January 8th. So, you know, not really that different than Zach Evans, who we just talked about. And some of these other guys are pretty close in that range, too. So not all that old um, for how long he played in college. Now, you could view the amount of carries that he had in college, I guess, against him over some of these other guys. But... Um, you know, a, a pretty prolific player here that I think doesn't get enough love. Um, it seemed like this was maybe the safest, easiest eval I've done so far out of just the receivers. And we're not that far through the running backs, but it was just like you turn it on. The numbers match up to the playing on the field. Now you have the Michigan uh, transfer. He went to Michigan initially mm -hmm. and he transfers uh, after the 20 season, the, the 2020 season. Yep. It was a nice freshman season. Uh, 164 snaps, 136 attempts, 642 yards, 4.7 yards per attempt. You have those TDs. sorted by non postseason. No, no postseason, no postseason. Those, 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 those won't match the stat, the graph I'm showing. Well, I, I, when, I, when I'm usually talking numbers, it's usually just sorted with regular season. That way, everyone's on the same playing field. Um, well, if you want to measure them up against the other guys, sure. then sure, but, but. That's that was his regular season totals. Uh, really, he had 149 attempts, 726 <laughs> yards, 11 touchdowns, 434 yards after contact. I got 395. So yeah, so he know. had a great bowl season. Did 27 just, missed forced tackles is a good little freshman showing. It'll yeah. just get better over time. Was was just pretty rock solid in Michigan. Then then has you know the transfer after in the 2020 season. Must have gotten hurt in 2020. I don't it, know what it happened. It seemed there. like maybe so, maybe maybe a little not not quite right. And then then the transfer, I, I dug you know, around. Only had 19 a little attempts bit, in 2020. Right. So so maybe fact, somebody can help us out in the comments to tell us exactly what happened. It didn't seem super duper clear. And I'm sure um, that skews the pr production metrics. I'm sure if you're not going on a per game basis. But then he gets to 20 to UCLA in 2021. Back mm. back to where he's kind of from. Yep, you know. and he wanted to be close to his little sister, who's a special needs, Bella. Right, which, you know, maybe that's a good reason, but maybe it's Corum came in and Edwards came in and they were saying, hey, we're, we're going to split up production and maybe he wanted his a little bit more, and, and but maybe he's just a great guy and wanted to be closer to the sister. Yeah. All more, things can be true. More with the bio, like there's nothing bad to find about this guy right. every the coaches the players all speak really well of him they say you know he's he's a good demeanor soft-spoken guy he doesn't talk much he's more about his actions but when he does talk everybody listens because he's so good at everything that he does they just want to right. hear everything he has to say that's the lineman talking right the offensive line talking um we and, just and did evans and the character was kind of questionable we don't know i don't mark. know him so i can't but there is no question with the with the character of charbonnet Nah, he was putting in the most work weight room film room just setting the example being one of your best players setting the best example that's what you love as a coach and right you know you know he's not gonna fuck around when he gets right to the and, next and, level. and you know as as you know we allude to in some of these the longer you've been doing this the more i care about that character at the next level talent can certainly take you and elevate you and keep you up there but guys like charbonnet want, with the want to and willingness and 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 the non-selfishness are right can, can take you and keep you at a higher level um than maybe even your talent well definitely more than your talent can take you there's there's a whole nother step of greatness and that the great the really truly great ones with longevity are going to do that do those silly little things right and, and meticulously and right. over and over again and for no reason and you one thing you just mentioned talent and i think you said it off air some of the best things you ever say are off air mm -hmm. and I'm recording but you said that talent is not the same thing as this as athleticism right and for whatever this guy might lack in athleticism 
Which I don't know how lacking in athleticism he is. He's maybe no, not I, a top-notch athlete. They, they have him as four four one in the that 40, seems which seems fast. Too fast. Seems a bit fast. I don't think he's four four one. I don't know that he is. If if Zach Evans isn't four four two, then Charbonnet isn't four four one. It doesn't because Zach be. Evans I think is faster than Charbonnet. Charbonnet. It's I would say yes. I would agree with that. Um, but you know you could you could say that there. I, I think there's. Plenty of plus athleticism with Charbonnet, mm-hmm. um, you know, especially for his size. Even though the BMI isn't through the roof, it's only twenty fifth percentile because he's six one. But two twenty. Right. I mean, what are we doing? He's tw- he's two twenty. Right. What, what do I care about the BMI? Two twenty. He he's been relatively healthy throughout. I think he he did have a little bit of a knee thing in twenty twenty and and the end of nineteen. I think that he he got right with and then you know mostly pretty much played throughout 21 and 22 and had a great campaign with chip kelly and the ucla bruins and and dtr helped turn that program around oh for sure and then you know much like evans we're, we're painting a picture of maybe why the, the the production profile isn't where you want it whereas charbonnet's is the exact opposite when you go right to this last year in 2022 he basically gets better every single year in just about every category um now that 20 season this his yards per attempts were higher than his 21 season but he only had 31 att- or uh, 19 attempts so yeah you know, whatever uh, basically getting better every year and he, you know right off the rip in 2022 you could eighth in, in yards per attempt with 7.0 uh, 11th in tds with 14 28th in missed tackles force with 53 in rushes of 10 yards or more i have him at third with 44 so if you have him at fifth it, it could be more accurate either way still very uh very strong showing there. 15th in yards after contact per attempt with 14 or 4, 14, hmm. 4.15. Eighth yep. in yards after contact with 806. Fourth in plus 15 yard rushes. So that's pretty solid with 24. 11th in targets. Uh, so much like Evans was maybe lacking in the target department. Uh, Charbonnet each year just builds on his target resume with 44 there. And then he's 34th in yards per route run with 1.30. Now, I don't know how much that really matters because I don't For think running backs. I don't think he is, you know, he's you're not going out there and saying that, hey, they do set him out wide, but it's mostly just a gimmick kind of system. They might throw a screen to him or something. He's not necessarily a route runner. Uh, those targets are very high. The receptions were good, but the hands Mm -hmm. very natural you look at evans it it doesn't look natural there's a a couple of his 12 catches you could say look natural (laughs) but then a couple of the other ones are like this looks like it's a kind of a struggle a little bit and the drops seem low the number that was he was charted with seemed low but oh yeah i I agree charting drops right i agree 100 percent. but natural hands but not necessarily a a route runner no i mean he he did see him lining up in the slot and out wide especially at ucla but they never targeted him there right but but coming out of the backfield man right like he is a sure hand great check down safety valve they'll run him out of the backfield and straight down and and throw him a little bit deeper and and he he came up with some very big plays in the past game 15 missed force tackles you know 385 yak that's good for 10.4 yak per reception. Right. You know, that's a strong number. 9.1 for his career. I was referencing 2022. And five total drops in his career. I didn't really see any drops. Maybe I fought, maybe I saw one. I got, um, I got two, one, zero, and two. I think I looked so at like five or six five. all 22s, yeah. man. I was just churning through them, and they yeah. were a joy to watch. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Like, when, when we got into this, this has been the easiest, safest, easy I, I didn't know eval. if I was like, am I missing something here? Right. Because nobody really likes this guy. It's, and it's just like, there's just so many runs that are just uh, just so fun to watch. Like, he just... I mean, this class is mid, and he's mid. No. Oh. I fucking hate the word mid. I definitely hate the word mid. And I fucking, I hate that, that every year that we have to go through this. Oh. And then we look back and we're like, oh, you know, that was pretty good. Uh, you know, <laughs> class wasn't that bad. You know, but as far as. But that next class, though. You know, all those numbers are great, but then they match up with what you're seeing on the field. The production, all everything kind of back checks itself and all kind of checks out. Third in, in the rush grade for PFF with 93.6. Um, so, you know, overall score for PFF, giving him a good a good nod there. What that necessarily means, I don't know. But here it kind of fits with all the production and what, with what you're seeing on film. And when you get into the film, you get a guy who's definitely more of a north south runner. But I don't I don't think like and when I say that, I don't think he can go east to west. It's not that he's going completely left or right. It's that he can make subtle movements while keeping that straight line. And I don't see a ton of deceleration when he's just making those little wiggles and he makes plenty of 
people miss in the open field. He's not a very he's not a stiff big two twenty. Mm-hmm. I think he seems fairly I think limber. The looks good, right? He doesn't, but he also doesn't try to do too much. You know, which yeah. is but he's decisive and, and he, right instinctual. Right, agreed. And and can makes can, quick decisions. Can like, be that power guy, but he also I think I thought the acceleration was was pretty good. And and again I, I I've read some stuff where people thought that, that he geared down too much when he was kind of moving laterally. Yeah, I'm sure maybe if he makes a big cut, but a lot of the times where his movement was subtle little one or two step left or right to just kind of shift the defender around and, and then move around him. But plenty of jukes in the open field. Uh, I thought the vision vision was very good uh, for. For Charbonnet, I just I think everything is just checks plus plus plus. I don't really have too much bad to say about him. Um, mm-hmm. I guess you know pass yeah. protection maybe not the most plus, but whatever. He's not graded out spectacularly. Neither was Evans on, in the pass protection. I would say that there is some op- there is some stuff you can see where he is you know putting guys down and, and, and picking up blocks. There's other parts where he misses. Overall, not asked to pass protect a lot. Right. Uh, he valuable just, in the check down game. He's running, right? You know, he's he's getting a fake handoff. You right. know, like it's just we're using this man, right, to funnel our offense through, and um, it, it really worked. And he was crushing it so much, like in a lot of those cut ups. Oh my like God. he is just murking lesser talented teams. Um, to the point where when you get to, when you watch the USC game, he's he is facing a stiffer defense and instead of breaking off these long runs he's having to work for and and just make a decision to get three or four yards i need you to do that right i loved seeing that right and then he kept at and, it and usc and he would defense bust this off. year maybe not the best but you know they have pretty good athletes that wasn't a great probably defense one overall, of the better defenses at least from the tape that i had to watch right that he faced and and it wasn't every run but it was just like i'd you know he was just crushing stanford and i forget the other has a good game that i had Oregon uh, I didn't, that wasn't an all 22 but um I think Colorado and I can't remember just just running through people LSU and then that's a good game against LSU um last year hit, hits USC and he's having to work a little harder for it, but he's still keeping he's the drive off. alive and then he run. busts it off right. and then he sticks with it you can stick with him enough he busts off a long run and, and like you said fourth and 15 yard runs and fifth or third and 10 yard runs like just right. getting it done for you and and then doing in a, everything in a bunch of different ways mm-hmm. and you know you're, you're not i think part of the problem with maybe some of the wide receivers is is the size and weight and some of no the problem, problem with there. some of the problems with the running backs size and weight and committees on a lot of these guys which is maybe given the some people like hey maybe this class isn't as great as it is because you don't have these quote-unquote bell cows first of all there's not that many in the nfl but there's a lot of committees and people who's one A's and one B's. Charbonnet can come in here and and at least has the chance, skill set, opportu- and and potential opportunity to be a three down guy where you don't really need anybody else. He can do it all. You can lean on him if you need to. He can break one. You can throw it to him. You just don't have to worry about very much with Charbonnet. Mm-hmm. And and right now, I think you know, I think I don't. I haven't broken down Gibbs, so I can't see he's my definite RB two. But I'd say Bijan one. I'd say probably, probably Gibbs, Gibbs two. I don't know. That may change, but Charbonnet's three. As of right now, and Evans behind. We him. did Evans. You know, I don't know if Charbonnet will come out before Evans or not, but you know, we did Evans. I feel good about him. I feel probably a little, just a little warmer and fuzzier. Like the the upside with Evans is probably higher, but the floor with Charbonnet and the receiving and the and the non questions off the I, field, like. That yeah, makes him a good prospect. There like, certainly could be quote unquote more upside with Evans, but how much more really though? Like you know, yeah. I mean, uh, if he's faster, if Charbonnet's supposed to be faster, I mean, the combine will tell us everything we need to know. Uh, but speaking of the combine, I do want to dive into a little bit more of the metrics um, sure. because I've been trying to one metric that's wrong is the PFF photo. <laughs> yeah, <It's> PFF's <laughs> photo not even close is not Zach Charbonnet. I thought something was <laughs> off. <laughs> And then you brought it up. You're like, they don't have his right photo. I'll show it on the screen. Like, that's not uh, Zach Charbonnet. That's Zach Charbonnet, yeah. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Wild. I was, it had me fucked up for a second. And might then I want to like, fix that, PFF. Hopefully, I, I, I took a screenshot so that they don't fix it before I could get it. Uh, <laughs> so I can prove. See, they, they had it. Tweet deleted. Uh, All right, give me some metrics. So I've been trying to, I've been trying to, nor- I'm, I'm, I'm normalizing spreadsheets this offseason. Sorry, it's our mission. It's our mission. Trying, I'm going to make a fucking t-shirt uh, because, you know, 
there's so much analytical data that flies around out there. And a lot of times the guys that do it or gals, they're just so staunch. The tone's wrong. The staunchness and the tone. Turns, Can't have a conversation or question anything. It turns film people off, you know, and it's turned me off in the past. And it, because a lot of times it's like even just diving into this and, and, and we've made friends with JB, John Bauer over the Dynasty Theory. Uh, uh, he's a good dude. He's not, He doesn't come at you with this staunchness. We have awesome conversations with him when he comes on the mic. Um, can't wait to get him back on. But, you know. I'm going through his spreadsheet and I'm, I'm like trying to figure out what it is that he likes, why he likes it. And then comparing that to like other, you know, websites to have analytics on it and stuff. And there's differences. And sometimes stats are, or, or metrics are created on a total game basis. Some are on a per game basis. You know, I don't know if the player profiler dominator takes into account rushing and receiving or if it's a bit of both, you know, and, and so just trying to dive in to see what, what's important and, how that matches up with what you're seeing on the field. So, you know, I'll throw some metrics up here on the screen. You know, Dominator, 70th percentile. I don't think people care too, too much about the Dominator. Um, and I do want to get JB on here to talk about how all these things weigh into his score um, because they all probably do weigh differently. And like we said, draft capital, I said this on the Zach Evans show, draft capital is like one of the biggest metrics. It's got to probably weigh the most right. for running backs because you have be the best metrics. And if you go in the sixth round, you're probably never going to be good. But Another thing that I don't unless, think you have to worry about with Charbonnet is the capital will be good enough. It'll be good enough, right? Maybe not round two but round three i don't see him falling out of that yeah i can't see him not being in round two or three so right. that's you, you're again insulation is is great with charbonnet right so the metrics rushing attempts market share his best year which is his previous year was only 40 percent which is in the 42nd percentile uh the team had a lot of rushing attempts they, mm -hmm. them boys ran the shit out of the ball uh, I think 500 total rushing attempts. He only had Chip like Kelly's going to run some plays now. He only had 200, right? Right. They get off a lot of plays in general. Uh, but the rushing yards per team attempt, 2.71, that's in the 65th percentile. Rushing yards, market share, divided by rushing attempts, market share. The, his worst year was 1.06. I think that's what JB would said was the threshold is, is 45th percentile, uh, 1.06. And I need to get better at what these thresholds are. Right, Where right. is it? You that's, know, is that's it, a key component. Right. Um, but that's like a true, what did you say it was? Maybe a true rushing value or something. I don't yeah, know. we got to we got to clarify this, but um, more to come with that for sure. The target market share. This comes from player profiler. JB doesn't really care as much about the target market share, but fourteen point five percent. That's the ninety third percentile. That means he's good. Boom. That means he's good. That's a top stat on the player profiler. So he must be good if the target market share is in the ninety third percentile. The reception market share. His best year was twelve point six seven percent. That's the 69th percentile. So still good from a reception part. And that's mm -hmm. JB differs a little bit. He doesn't care as much about targets. I don't even think he has targets on his sheet. It's mostly about the receptions and what he does with them, the yards. So decent there. And then the average yards per carry in the 72nd percentile, right there at 6.0 or 5.99, up, round up to still six, pretty strong. whatever. BMI is only in the 25th percentile. I don't care. He's I don't give a fuck about you. He's, he's 220, right? He's 220. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about you. And I don't think he's running a 4-4, which would be in the 94th percentile right. speed score. Um, if he runs, if he blows the combine if out, he, he runs a for four, sure four, a second four, round one, lock. Then, yeah, he is going to be a second round pick. Right. So, I mean, that's you can find whatever you want to look at the film, you want to look at the stats, you want to look at the metrics, you can find something that'll tell you the Charbonnet is good. Why is he not higher on people's boards? Why, do, why are people not more excited about him? Why can't show up in a pecan jag? I don't right. know. What that's makes a rainbow? Who knows? Like, <laughs> I don't know why things are the way they are. I just know the Charbonnet is fucking good. Right. This uh, man's good at football. He he got like a, a one in my good at football score. Right. You know, it's a zero or a one. He, he binary. Checks, he checks boxes in, in all different categories. Film analytical, I would assume I, I from everything that I'm reading and seeing, um, you know, the actual then production counting stats are good. The way he matches up in, in all these categories against his his uh, compadres. Receiving. Um, and, and just again got better every year so you know i, I don't know what what he's is old. The he's not an early declare he's not an early that's declare it. and he transferred so that's not good but BMI. again but he's not that much he's not really any older he's well, a couple months like zach evans either a couple, though, so couple years older than evans i don't well, sure but like I, I think some a lot of these evans. running backs are i don't know if i have it here it um, is a little bit of an older class in general i feel like 
No, I got it on a different notepad. You uh, just flip through that legal. Uh, no. All my shit's right here digital. I just I had control it F. I had it. Uh, Get control F on that bitch. I had it for the Angelo show, which if you haven't seen, go check that out. Uh, we talk about all sorts of these running backs. Um, and, and he, he likes Charbonnet a good bit, too. Did so. he spit off any metrics or he he's just like he's a movement guy? He's He's got some metrics in there. I think he like, you know, I like I like him together. He likes him together. Yeah. I, you know, I just want to get I want to get a little bit more of clarification on some of the ones that matter and, and that they like in the threshold so we can be. A little more uh, dialed in, dialed to, in, right? To some of those, so we can just trying serve to everyone. normalize spreadsheets, baby. Let's go, Charbonnet to the to the moon, baby. I like I like what I'm seeing. I'm and and you know, I'm glad you felt the same way because I'm like I'm watching it. I'm like this this is good, right? He this seems, is good, right? It seems to be clear to me that if Gibbs ends up being the the RB two, that there's a, then a tear break, and that would be Charbonnet, and then you would put the Evans Tucker Tank. A chain, whoever you want to stack up in those next Chase Brown, Deuce Vaughn, you know, Abakanya, Kendra Miller, Kendra Miller, whoever the hell you want to stack up there. I have no idea, no order there. I don't, I don't know. I haven't gotten into them, but I, I would. Charbonnet seems to stand on his own by himself in that next tier and should be probably a, a for sure first rounder in your rookie drafts uh, mm. thus far. I would assume so. Who? People won't like that. Well, I mean, that's a hot fire. What receivers are oh. you going to, you know, you'd have to take a whole bunch of receivers over him to. Well, yeah. Don't you know that's the only way to play fantasy football? But, we don't, we, but there's a lot of, you know, issues. There's a lot of yeah, buts with those guys too. So, I mean, this is a mid class, <laughs> right? So I, th- I think Charbonnet is going to end up as a, as a, as a locked in, uh, First round into the draft, first rounder, maybe even like one seven mid? one eight. <laughs> if he you blows, know, if he blows you know how mid he is. If he blows mid the fucking, your first round, if he blows the fucking combine up, then the, you know everyone's gonna. This man runs a four four one. I runs, don't see. I think it. if he runs anywhere in the four fours, the people are gonna be stoked about him. So, and he's you know you know he's gonna interview well. You know he's gonna probably do all the all the other. If the four four one's good, the rest of the testing is gonna be good. I think, um, you know. Oh, I can't wait till we can know everything. Come on. All right. So there's Charbonnet. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, all that good jazz. Uh, we're doing shorts and reels and all kinds of stuff. So follow us on there for other con on, on those platforms. Go hit the Instagrams, the the, sh- the YouTube shorts. Check your boys out. You can join Patreon.com, the FF Dynasty. You're going to be doing uh, three extra shows uh, a month on there. You get access to the Discord. We're going to be doing at least two to three mocks a month on there so that gets you access to those um lots of good stuff over there all for five bucks so come join the squad and uh you know support your boys support your boys if you made this far you know we appreciate you and if you listen on the podcast you got to go check out the youtube page because we got some films and some graphics and you know aesthetics for your, for your pleasure five stars always appreciate it boys and right. girls all right, y'all. and children. If you're listening with your kids in the car, get your get your phones out too. <laughs> Tell them not to say the f word in class. It's all it's all you got to do. Yeah. Listen, you can't curse around adults. I I don't curse around adults. You know, like I curse around friends. Or if I'm in a bar, you can fuck the fuck <laughs> off. Like it's <laughs> it's mostly about respect. That's really all it right, comes down to. Right. Right. Respect the situation and the people. On a podcast about fantasy football, KGFY. GFKY. All right. (laughs) We love y'all. Peace.